talking about uh, what we were going to do if we were going to join the battle. We decided that we were going to go together. Uh, governor Gates, the governor of Illinois at the time, he had sent out to all the counties. He had sent actual um, Captain Grant at the time to look for boys to join the army and to recruit. We would, so the Civil War started in April of 1861 when Fort Sumner fell. We would respond to that call and the boys from Central Illinois would go to Springfield to Camp Yates in October of 1861. Uh, after we had arrived, they quickly realized that Camp Yates was too small and they were going to move us. Uh, they didn't like the horses in town. Camp Yates is now where your guys' state fairgrounds is. They would move us to Camp Butler, which it was at that time was five miles outside of town. Camp Butler is still there today. Um, there is a military cemetery and history museums there at Camp Butler. We would train at Camp Butler until February of 1862. So almost a year after the war had actually started, that Illinois actually sent the soldiers from Camp Butler out. Uh, when we left Camp Butler, they then turned Camp Butler into a prison camp during the Civil War where they kept Confederate prisoners. Uh, when we left Springfield, the 5th Illinois would embark for Benton, the Benton Barracks in St. Louis, Missouri. We arrived at Benton Barracks in St. Louis, Missouri. We would, at that point, be given our orders. They would form, we would get our horses, um, and we were then shipped south to join the war effort. The 5th Illinois Cavalry would actually fight in the western theater. We would go down through Missouri, Arkansas, and to Mississippi. We would be part of General Sherman's army on the western theater campaign. Um, we left Spring or St. Louis, Missouri, on um, March 3rd of 1862. About a month later, April 4th of 1862, the Fifth Illinois actually came across their first engagement. Um, they were engaged in a small battle between Confederate sympathizers in Southern Missouri. We would, uh, of course, win that battle, move on farther into South. When we get into Arkansas. In June of 1862, uh, my brother William would be shot off of a horse while we were uh, fighting a small skirmish with Confederate sympathizers in Arkansas. Uh, it would not kill William, however, his disability would cause him to be sent home. Uh, he would come back to Coles County, back to our family farm. We would continue on into Mississippi. Um, our goal was to, or our orders, were to go to towards Vicksburg, we were going to meet with uh, General Kimball's army. He had two divisions, two regiments of infantry and eight pieces of artillery. We would meet, our goal was to arrive there and join his forces as his cavalry. Um, we would have the officer's camp, like this, with his desk and his overhang, and then the, the tents would have been out in front of him. Uh, he obviously would have had the high ground, the nice spot. Lower man would have been the one spot on the hill. So a little bit about the equipment. So we were talking when some of you walked up. So they would have wore this all the time. So if you notice something, if you notice, some of them had coats with yellow striping on it. So that was the cavalry. If you were in the infantry, you would have had blue striping, and if you were in the artillery, your striping would have been red. Every officer or every soldier was issued. Welcome to Camp Missouri. So this is what a common cavalry soldier would look like. Okay. We had these square buckles instead of the round USA buckles. As you see, um, and we would have had a saber. And this is the trim I was talking about. So he's got yellow trim on his coat. That would have signified that he was in the cavalry, where the blue was in the tree. Now, so every soldier would have also been issued a sack coat, something like this. You notice his had, I believe it's eight buttons down the front, right? This only has four buttons down the front, and it is unlined. 
those coats had a line into them. This was unlined. They would have also been issued this. This was more like their fatigues. So in today's military, this would have been the camo. That would have been the dress uniform. A lot of, so every soldier got that. They started out all looking pretty and yellow, right? As the war went on, they got to where they decided that they were not carrying all this crap, and they got rid of it. So they would keep the lighter unlined coat because it is hot. And who wants a lining instead of a little coat? So a lot of times they would toss those coats to the sky. It actually got bad enough with them getting rid of equipment that the Union Army decided that they didn't want to waste this equipment, and they actually had wagons that followed the cavalry and the troops to just pick up all the equipment that was tossed in the ditches along the way. Because so many guys were just, especially the infantry, they didn't want to pack it. You know, who wants to pack all this stuff? Cycle. They did. That's why they, yeah, that's why the wagons picked it back up. They then reissued it to other guys. So, every, they would have been issued this, a great coat. So they would have wore that attire right there all year long. This would have been their winter coat. They would have then wore that over that coat. Same thing goes. This thing's bulky. A lot of guys would toss it. Now, there's a lot of guys that froze to death and probably regretted that. Yeah. <laughs> but, at the time, you're tired of packing that stuff, you toss in the ditch and you move on, you worry about winter when winter gets here. Um, so your cavalry horses would have been issued, they would have had a McClellan saddle. Um, I don't have one out here, but if you guys, when you're done, if you want to, there's one on a horse over there still. Daniel, actually, in that tent right there, there's a saddle. Can you grab it and bring it here? So they would have tried to pack no more than 200 pounds on a horse. That includes the weight of the soldier. Just because if your horse broke down on you, if your horse broke down on you, you would then be walking. So, so this is the saddle that they would have had. It's a McClellan saddle. It wouldn't have a horn on it typically like our saddles do. Um, they look like they're extremely uncomfortable. However, the guys, I don't ride a horse. I'd rather ride this than my western But the guys saddle. that ride the horses say they would rather ride these than the new western saddles if these things are actually more comfortable. It's long handed or long? It just, it's for, it forms to your body better. So an officer saddle would have looked something kind of like that, except for the white part, the hard plastic, or whatever that is, would be covered with leather for an officer and they would be all black. All right, so we're going to move into wet. So, when we started out the Civil War, of course, everybody knows you have the muskets, right? The infantry have muskets, pour the powder down the barrel, take your ramrod, seat your bullet, your powder, put a cap on it, and you fire. A well-trained well infantry officer could fire three rounds in a minute. When the Cavalry started out, they shortened those, took them down to two bands, and made them shorter so that you could carry them on your horse. However, it didn't work out so well having to load powder down the barrel while you were on horseback. So they would actually start issuing, this is a Sharps carbine, to the cavalry soldiers. Sharps carbine still takes, still takes a percussion cap to fire off the weapon, it doesn't have a primer but it is a breech loading weapon. So you would take a cartridge. It would have looked something like this, not quite, but something like this, a cardboard or a paper type. And you would have actually, you would have slid that round in there just like you do today's type cartridge, it's brass, other than it's paper. The back of the, cartridge would be very thin paper compared to the rest of it so that when the cap fired off it would ignite the powder inside that paper round and then it would go out. A well-trained cavalry officer could fire eight to ten rounds a minute with this compared to the three rounds that an infantry guy could have thrusted. So with that being said obviously this was quite a weapon that the cavalry liked and an advantage that made even though the cavalry already had an advantage of riding horses to get in there quicker set up they also could engage half the, you know, half the guys 
of what the cavalry or what the infantry and the Confederacy had, we could engage them and be firing the same amount of bullets that they're firing just because our weapon was able to fire at a more rapid <coughs> So the Confederates actually have these two. Um, and we have one here. So this is an 1863. This is an 1865. This is an 1863. This is an 1859. What they did is they had some extras on the 59, a little fancier of a, uh, a weapon. When they got to the war, they needed more of them. They took the fancy stuff off so that they could produce them a little faster. So it's just the same weapon, but it doesn't have quite the bells. It's some of the tiny accessories. It's got the important ones for war. Every cavalry soldier would be issued this. This is a carbine sling. You wouldn't ever want to lose your rifle on the horse because if you were riding the horse and you drop your, you may be falling back, you may be moving, you can't just get off your horse and grab your rifle. Better it's around your butt. So everybody would have one of these. On that saddle, on the side of the saddle, there's actually a boot. You never unhooked it from you, but there's a boot on the saddle that it slides in. Just like this, and it goes down in it and it holds it right about here. And it's just it right there so that you can pull that back out. But it would keep it from banging all over. Right. Some of the soldiers would choose just to sling them like this, keeping their ammo for the carving right here. Easier to get it when you needed it. There's something to read. Like I said. You had to keep your weight under 200 pounds on your horse, so you had to pick what you wanted to carry with you. So you also had to keep your utmost. Your utmost goal was to keep that horse healthy because if the horse wasn't healthy, you were walking. And you had an advantage of being in the cavalry. Officers preferred the Remington over the Colt. They were they were pretty close to the same here. In order to get this cylinder out, you actually have to pull this pin and remove the barrel, and then that cylinder comes off. With the Remington, you can open the... You can open this, pull the pin, and just put a new cylinder in. So the officers would prefer this because they didn't carry carbines, so they could have spare cylinders on their belts. Um, very rarely did a, did a soldier carry two pistols, officers would carry two pistols because they didn't carry the rifle. Or they would have them. So they're both very similar in, in size, look, operate the same. They're both six shots, 44 caliber. They did have 36 caliber. They were a little smaller, but the bigger pistols were 44 caliber. The shark's bullet was a 54. Have questions? 